In this video, I wanna talk about a method that changed my life, the Burrs method. If you didn't know, I love the Burrs method. I bought $26 million worth of real estate without using any of my own money with this method. And it's snowing outside and it's called the Burrs method. So I thought obviously that's corny, but let's go with it. So on this snow day, I don't just want to talk about the Burrs method and all the good things that can happen. I wanna talk about four issues or mistakes that a lot of people make when they get started with the Burrs method. If you wanna know more detail about what the Burrs method is, click on the video above. I walk you through an actual property and go detailed into what the Burrs method actually is with a real life example. But for this video, let's talk about the Burrs method and the issues you can get with the Burrs method. In a nutshell, the Burrs method is a way to buy real estate using other people's money. As I stated earlier, I've done this hundreds of times on houses, apartments, and storage facilities, all without using any of my own money. Here's the four issues that people run into when they're doing the Burrs method. Number one, you have to buy the property at enough of a discount. A lot of people get emotional, get excited, it's their first property, they squeeze the numbers. In order to do this without using any of your own money, you have to buy a discounted property that is distressed but at a discount. You cannot buy a property too high or buy a property near market value if you don't wanna use any of your own money. There's some snow. Anyways, so you have to buy it at enough of a discount so that you don't have to use your own money because banks are willing to lend you money without you having to put any money down, but there has to be equity in the deal. In order to have equity in the deal, you need to make sure to buy it at enough of a discount because it's distressed. So don't get emotional, just stick to your numbers. I know it's exciting. Like buying your first deal or your second or third deal, it's super exciting. But what's not exciting is not being able to make the deal whole or having to come out of pocket at the end to make the Burrs deal work. Every time I make this turn, it snows right in the face. Anyways, um, so make sure you're buying at enough of a discount so that you can add value by fixing it up and you know just trust your numbers. When you're looking at the comparable house sales, when you're looking at your rehab budget, don't say best case scenario, this will happen. I'm definitely a guy that wants to look at the positive things in life, but when it comes to something like this, you gotta be conservative. I can't tell you how many times our rehab's gone over budget, but we're okay because we were conservative in that budget and we assumed that the house was gonna be worth this much when it's really worth this much. So just be conservative on your rehab budget as well as your after repair value calculation. And that allows for room for air because especially on your first few deals, there's gonna be airs. Number two, approving tenants too quickly. Once you've put in all the work, you've bought the house at a discount, you've bought it cheap enough, you've done you know everything right up until approving a tenant, and then you just see a tenant that makes enough income and has a decent credit score, and you approve the first or second tenant that you get that applies for your house. While you're not guaranteed to have an issue if you quickly approve a tenant, it just really ups your chances of having issues with tenants. You need to spend more time approving tenants. You need to have a system and a process or hire it out. Hire a company that does it for a living, but you need to put a little more time into your tenant approval process. A lot of people will approve somebody if they can fog a mirror and have a decent credit score. You gotta look at their income, you gotta look at their spending habits, you gotta talk to their past landlords, you have to you know, look at their actual bank statements there's a lot of things you need to do look at their past you know eviction record there's so many things that you need to do and look into approve a tenant because approving that tenant is probably the most important part of this whole process because if you get a good tenant in place they're going to pay rent on time they're going to take care of what they're supposed to take care of in the house they're they're going to communicate properly they're going to allow you and them to have a good experience one or two bad tenants, especially at first, can really, really throw a monkey wrench into your plans. It's gonna take time and effort and evictions and all this stuff that nobody wants to get into. So take some extra time, even if it takes an extra two or three weeks approving the right tenant, it will make a world of difference. Number three, not getting approved at the bank beforehand. Again, I don't wanna go into a ton of detail on the Burrs method. I had that video that popped up earlier. Let's pop it up again to show you if you want to see what actually the Burrs method is in detail, but assuming you know a little bit about it, eventually you have to take your property to a bank and they're gonna do an 80% cash out refinance. 
that cash out refinance is gonna allow you to pay back your initial lender plus interest so you don't have to have any money out of pocket. They do that 80% cash out refinance, as I stated earlier, there's 20% equity in there, so that's why they're willing to do it. But if you haven't got approved at the bank beforehand, there can be an issue because now you have a house with a tenant in place and no long-term funding lined up. While it's not the end of the world, you can probably you know, sell the property to a hedge fund or sell the property to an investor for a round break even because like you said, you have hopefully some equity built in there. You're hopefully not gonna lose money, but you did all that work to break even or make a little bit of money or maybe even lose a little bit of money. So as you're working on this process, make sure you go to these small local banks or small credit unions before you get a property under contract or even as you're starting the rehab process and make sure that they are okay with you and with loans like the ones you're gonna be bringing them. Just giving them an example deal before you even have anything under contract will help a lot. Number four and the most important by far is getting started. So many people screw up by not getting started or I wish I would've started a couple years ago. I have so many people, so many of my students, we have a couple hundred of them now, almost every single one wishes they started earlier. A, the market wasn't as competitive as it is now earlier. So the earlier you get started, it seems like the market every single month and every single year just gets more and more competitive. And sorry to tell you, there's not gonna be a big drop in my opinion that's gonna have all the competitors just leave. There's too much hedge fund money in the market. There's too much Wall Street money in the market. There's just too much money in the market to have it dip completely and just have, you know, where you can buy pennies on the dollar houses. That's just not gonna happen again for a long, long time, if ever, in my opinion. So get started now. If you do it the right way, you can make money in a downward market, a flat market, or an up market, because you're buying at a discount from the market value. You're not buying it like a set price. Wherever the market is at that current time, you're gonna buy at a discount from that. So the market's high, low, wherever it is, you can still make a lot of money and buy a lot of deals with the Burrs method without using any of your own money, but you gotta get started now. My channel probably has thousands of hours of content on it that can help you do it for free. So if that interests you, make sure to check out my channel and I would like to help you grow your rental portfolio so you can control your future using real estate. Let me help you. If you enjoyed this video at all, getting kind of getting kind of cold, my nose is getting cold, hit that like button. I'd appreciate it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel as well. See you on the next one.